When I work the day shift and I'm on my way home from work, my route often takes me past a woman's hospital. And, well, we all know what goes on in women's hospitals here in Canada. They perform abortions, which are uh, paid for uh, by the government-financed health care system. Uh, it's actually an insurance scheme. It's not actually a government-financed health care system. But anyway, your tax dollars end up subsidizing abortion or paying for it, paying the costs. Um, so, of course, you get the usual sandwich board set outside women's hospitals or any hospital where they know that this sort of thing is taking place. And they carry the big pictures of aborted fetuses and stuff like this and, you know, just the usual nauseating stuff. And I've developed a somewhat friendly rapport with them. Whenever I go by, um, I just uh, call out to them, guilt is violence, and they answer back, God bless you, sir. <laughs> uh, neither one of us really understands the other, and I don't think that we're really going to change each other's point of view. Um, because I think that that exchange that we have, where we sort of admit that we're hostile and we have essentially irreconcilable positions, um is sort of implicit in each in each person's response to the other. Um, you, you're, yeah, you're imposing guilt upon other people. You're acting as judge and jury, calling people murderers for doing what they're doing. And um, you, the, the, the protesters, are essentially saying, yes, we know that that's what we're doing, but we have total and utter faith in God, to whom we have surrendered our will, um, that we're doing the right thing. So never the twain shall meet, really. It becomes a question of power, and that sort of thing is what gets decided in legislatures and courts. Uh, so be it. For the time being, abortion is perfectly legal in Canada, and it's going to stay that way. Or it looks that way, for sure. Um, but it's interesting. I never really stopped and discussed my position with these people. It's just this ritual, and sometimes actually it ends up happening in the morning when I go in, and I go, guilt is violence, they say, God bless you, sir. Um, <clears throat> I've never actually stopped and talked to them. I don't want to do that. I have no desire to lock horns with these people on that issue. Um, especially when you never really know what kind of lunatics might show up on both camps, uh, and not like what you have to say. So I just stay out of it. But if I was to stop and engage these people, I would probably say, look, you people peddle in guilt. Um, you're probably working off your own sense of guilt by trying to guilt other people. Um, and you're using guilt to subvert the will of other people. Christians presumably believe in free will, and I would say you can't um, have a free will if it's a coerced will. <laughs> it's uh, kind of mutually exclusive. And the very purpose of guilt is, or at least imposed guilt, is to coerce the will. So when I deliberately crawl into somebody's head and make them feel guilty, um, I'm essentially tampering with their will. I'm essentially attempting to coerce that person. But I would say to them, don't worry. It, you people don't have any, by any means, a monopoly on this. Say, I, I would tell them I deal with hardcore atheists all the time that peddle in guilt probably to a greater extent than the uh, anti-abortion Christian protesters that I see every day and exchange friendly barbs with. Guilt suffuses just about everything in our culture and our ethics and our morals and any kind of our thinking. You turn on the sitcom, and there's usually a black hat and a white hat. Watch a movie, same thing. Commercial, same thing. Every last exchange that we have in our society uh, has to do with somebody being in the right and somebody being in the wrong. It's uh, quite astounding when you stop and look at it that way. <laughs>